assalamu alaikum uh, i hope so you all are fine assalamu alaikum i hope so all, all of you are fine and doing great let's start with the name of allah almighty i would like uh, to uh, welcome our today's uh, guest speaker dr nagman zubairi uh, uh, to continue his uh, today's topic on the uh, tooth evolution due to trauma assalam alaikum sir how are you wa alaikum assalam i am good alhamdulillah sir uh, you can uh, proceed from here sure sure okay guys so actually last night i saw that uh, there was some um, like uh, issues going on on this topic and actually we were supposed to conduct some lecture on this uh, youtube channel today uh, at uh, 9:30 uh, according to the ontario time in canada so uh, i just changed the topic and i thought that we should talk today uh, regarding the management of an evolved tooth uh, the evolution because of trauma and uh, uh well sorry for the delay because there were some uh, network glitches uh, from the channel side i was waiting here since 9:25 to proceed so let's start without uh, delaying with the lecture first of all let's see the epidemiology of the evolution trauma evolution of permanent teeth is seen in 0.5% to 16% percent of all dental injuries most commonly evils teeth are maxillary incisors and that is common both among the primary as well as permanent dentition evolution injuries are three times more frequent among boys because being more sporty and more uh, into like mischievous behavior at, in a young age as compared to the girls <clears throat> it occurs most commonly in the children between 72 to 9 years of age and that is the time when the permanent incisors are erupting not yet mature mostly it happens in class 2 incisor relationship the reason is the overjet is there and that is making the child prone to have trauma to their maxillary incisors why evolution occurs like complete tooth evolves instead of getting trauma at the incisal edge or at the coronal area why it is more common more frequent that a tooth gets evolved what is the reason behind it So in 1981 Anderson suggested that the loosely structured periodontal ligament surrounding the erupting teeth favors complete evolution upon impact from trauma to the anterior region of upper jaw What would be the solution Always keep in mind replantation is the solution whether it is for a short period of time or it is for a longer period of time even if we are not sure that what would be the outcome later maybe it is going to be failed at that time psychologically and even for the development of the dentition replantation is the solution prognosis of this replantation is dependent upon how immediately the management is done the appropriate emergency management and a treatment plan are important for a good prognosis well there are few reports in the literature of this techniques proving successful for even indefinite period of time in the year 1976 an author barry he reported on functioning teeth which were plant replanted like in 1976 he reported which were replanted at that time 42 years ago before this report was published the success of the replantation procedure is undoubtedly related to the length of time 
that elapses between the loss of the tooth and its replacement in the socket. In a study, it is reported that those evil's teeth which were replanted within 30 minutes, 90% showed no discernible evidence of resorption after two or more years. In the same study, they have reported that 95% of the teeth replanted more than two hours after the injury, they showed root resorption. So time is important. Time matters. If the tooth has been out of the mouth for under 30 minutes, prognosis is more favorable. There are other factors which play a vital role in the success of replantation, including healthy periodontia. Immature tooth where the apices are not yet closed, they have more chances of success Whereas in mature teeth, pulpectomy is indicated after few days of replantation. Well, recently, paper is published on the guidelines from the International Association of Dental Traumatology. They have developed a consensus statement after an update of the dental literature and discussions among the expert groups. And according to that, immediate replantation of the owl's tooth is the best treatment at the place of the accident. If for some reason this cannot be carried out, there are alternatives such as using different types of storage media. If the tooth is evolved, make sure it is a permanent tooth. Primary teeth are not going to be replanted. This is for sure we are not going to replant the primary teeth at any cost. This is very important. First of all, when the trauma occurs and the evolution is there, definitely the child would be totally startled. So calm down the patient because they will be very, very anxious at that time. Find the tooth and pick it up by the crown. Avoid touching the root. Attempt to place it back immediately into the jaw. If tooth is contaminated because of some dirt or soil or something, then rinse it gently in milk, saline, or even in patient saliva and replant or return it to its original position in the jaw. So if they call you, like the parent or the patient, and they tell you that it has happened, these should be your guides, uh, lines, or you can say instructions to the parent or the patient that perform these immediately. Once the tooth has been returned to its original position in the jaw, the patient should bite on a gauze or a handkerchief or a napkin to hold it in the place. If replantation of the, at the accident site is not possible or for other reason when replantation of the evil's tooth is not feasible, like in case of an unconscious patient, place the tooth as soon as possible in some storage media. And transport the patient as well as the tooth immediately to the dentist. See the dentist or dental professional immediately to avoid the dehydration of the periodontium of an owl's tooth. It, if it cannot be replanted immediately, it should be placed in the uh, transport media or storage media immediately within at least 30 minutes of the injury. Well, there are certain storage media available, milk, hang solution, Sliva. Previously, Hank solution was considered as the media of choice, but in the article published in the year 2020, according to them, milk is more uh, preferable as compared to the Hank solution than saliva of the patient or maybe saline. Treatment guidelines for the evolved permanent teeth. Now, that was the first aid or immediate treatment.
treatment means where the treatment is provided by the professional. The choice of treatment is related to the maturity of the root, whether the apex was open or closed, and the condition of the periodontal ligament cells. The condition of the PDL cells is dependent upon the time out of the mouth and on the storage medium in which the evil's tooth was kept. Minimizing the dry time is critical for survival of the PDL cells after an extra alveolar dry time of 30 minutes. Most of the PDL cells are non viable. The important point is when you are taking the history, take the information regarding the dry time or the time the tooth was out of the mouth before replantation or before putting it into the storage medium. Well, before we proceed, the prognosis depends upon the class of the PDL following the evolution. So we have to assess the condition of the PDL cells by classifying the evil's tooth into one of these three groups. The first group, the PDL cells are most likely viable. The tooth has been replanted immediately or within a very short time at the place of accident. The PDL cells may be viable but compromise the second uh, group. The tooth has been kept in the storage medium like milk or Hank solution or maybe saliva or saline within 60 minutes of the evolution. Then the PDL cells are likely to be non-viable. The third group, the total extraoral dry time has been more than 60 minutes, regardless of the tooth having been stored in a medium or not. The treatment guidelines for an evolved permanent tooth with a closed apex when the tooth is already implanted by the parent or patient. Clean the injured area, like now we are discussing, already it is in place, patient is brought to your clinic, so what you are going to do. Clean the injured area with water, saline or chlorhexidine. Verify the correct position of the replanted tooth, both clinically and radiographically. Leave the tooth or teeth in place except where the tooth is malpositioned. Malpositioning could be corrected using your slight digital pressure. Administer local anesthesia if required, not always. Well, some of the authors, they say that the local anesthesia should be without vasoconstrictor. We will discuss it later. If the tooth or teeth are replanted in the wrong socket or rotated, consider repositioning of the tooth or teeth into the proper location within 48 hours of the traumatic accident. Stabilize the tooth for two weeks using a two weeks time. Using a passive flexible splint such as wire of a diameter up to 0.016 inch or 0.4 millimeter bonded to the tooth and adjacent teeth. Keep the composite and bonding agents away from the gingival tissue to avoid any irritation and don't let it go even into the proximal area. Well, nylon finishing lines can also be used to create a flexible splint using the composites to bond. But nylon finishing lines should not be used if few permanent teeth are present because with the eruption, those are going to be lost very easily. Well, then suture the gingival lacerations if they are present, initiate root canal treatment within two weeks after the replantation. Well, if required, administer systemic antibiotics. It's again a matter of controversy. Should we or should we not? Well, if you feel that there is some kind of infection occurred, then administer systemic antibiotics. If not, there is no need for systemic antibiotics. Check the tetanus status of the patient. If required, then anti-tetanus should also be administered. 
then <clears throat> give them post operative instruction and keep them on the follow up we will discuss about the follow up protocol in a bit then comes the treatment guidelines for avulsed permanent teeth with a closed apex and brought to the clinic within 60 minutes kept in the storage medium if there is visible contamination of the tooth rinse the root surface with a stream of saline or osmolality balanced media to remove the gross debris check the evil's tooth for surface debris remove any debris by gently agitating it into the storage medium alternatively a stream of saline can be used to briefly rinse its surface put or leave the tooth in a storage medium while taking a history examining the patient clinically and radiographically and preparing the patient for the replantation administer local anesthesia preferably without a vasoconstrictor again we will discuss it some of the authors they say there is no harm in going with the vasoconstrictor but other authors they say you should give without vasoconstrictor irrigate the socket with steroid saline examine the alveolar socket if there is a fracture of the socket wall reposition the fractured fragment into its original position with a suitable instrument usually we use a uh, ball burnisher for that purpose removal of the coagulum with a saline stream may allow better repositioning of the tooth replant the tooth slowly with slight digital pressure do not apply excessive force otherwise because already there is trauma you may further traumatize the area verify the correct position of the replanted tooth both clinically and radiographically stabilize the tooth again for two weeks using the similar type of splints any of those could be chosen Suture the gingival lacerations if they are present. Initiate root canal treatment within two weeks after replantation. Again, whether or not to give the antibiotics, check the tetanus status, provide post-operative instructions, and follow up. Now, treatment guidelines for an avulsed permanent tooth with a closed apex when extra oral time is more than 60 minutes. Remove the loose debris and visible contamination by agitating the tooth in physiologic storage medium or with a gauze soaked in the saline. Tooth may be left in storage medium while taking a history, examining the patient clinically and radiographically and preparing the patient for the replantation. Give local anesthesia, irrigate the socket with sterile saline examine the alveolar socket remove the coagulum if necessary if there is a fracture of the socket wall again reposition it replant the uh, tooth with slight digital pressure verify the correct position both clinically as well as radiographically stabilize for two weeks again using the similar type of splints as we discussed discussed above Suture the gingival laceration, same protocol, initiate root canal treatment within two weeks, administer systemic antibiotics if required, check the tetanus status, provide post-operative instructions, and follow up. Delayed replantation has a poor long-term prognosis. The periodontal ligament becomes necrotic and is not expected to regenerate. The expected outcome usually is ankylosis-related or replacement root resorption the goal of replantation in these cases is to restore at least temporarily statics and function while maintaining the alveolar bone contour width and the height therefore the decision to replant a permanent tooth is almost always the correct decision even if the extra oral dry time is more than 60 minutes replantation will keep future treatment options open now if the tooth is with an open apex and it was replanted immediately by the parent or the patient clean the area with water saline or chlorhexidine patient is brought to you the tooth is in position what you are going to do clean the area 
then verify same thing using the clinical method and the x-ray method leave the tooth in the jaw administer the local anesthesia if required if the tooth or teeth were replanted in the wrong socket then within 48 hours you can manipulate and stabilize for two weeks using the similar different uh, suturing like these uh, splinting techniques preferably with flexible wire why this flexibility i will discuss it in a bit suture the gingival laceration same protocol initiate the root canal treatment within two weeks administer systemic antibiotics check the tetanus status provide post-operative instructions and follow up pulp revascularization which can lead to further root development is the goal when we replant immature teeth in children the risk of external infection related, which is inflammatory root resorption, should be weighed against the chances of revascularization. Such resorption is very rapid among the children. If spontaneous revascularization does not occur, then other procedures like apexification, pulp revitalization or pulp revascularization using the triple antibiotic paste and the stem cells procedure you can initiate that or root canal treatment should be initiated after apexification as soon as pulp necrosis and infection is identified don't wait otherwise even the survival of that tooth is going to be compromised in immature teeth with open apices there is a potential for spontaneous healing to occur in the form of new connective tissue with a vascular supply this allows continued root development and maturation. Hence, the endodontic treatment should not be initiated unless there are definite signs of pulpal necrosis and infection of the root canal system at the follow-up appointments. Open apex tooth has been kept in a physiologic storage medium or stored in the non-physiologic conditions and the extraoral time has been less than six minutes chances of revascularization is possible if it is not occurring then go for apexification or revascularization protocols if the extraoral time is longer than 60 minutes the prognosis is going to be poor local anesthesia consideration well there are concerns as to whether there are risks of compromising the healing by using a vasoconstrictor in the anesthetic solution however there is little evidence to support omitting a vasoconstrictor in the oral and maxillofacial region so there are both types of researches present and arguments present in the text well, it is always preferable to go for the regional anesthesia like infraorbital nerve block as an alternative to infiltration anesthesia in more severe injury cases and must be determined by the clinician's experience of providing such type of block injections. Stabilization of the replanted teeth. An acceptable splint should meet this criteria. It should be easy to fabricate directly in the mouth without lengthy laboratory procedures. It should be able to be placed passively without causing forces on the teeth. It should not touch the gingival tissues causing gingival irritation. It should not interfere with the normal occlusion. It should be easily clean and allow for proper oral hygiene. It should not traumatize the teeth or gingiva during application. It should allow an approach for endodontic therapy if required. It should be easy to remove without injuring the dental tissue. The splint should also allow mobility of the replanted tooth that is comparable with the normal mobility of a tooth. That's why we need flexible splint. Rigid stabilization seems to stimulate replacement resorption of the tooth, means it will lead to ankylosis of the tooth. The bonded resin and a wire uh, splint satisfy all the criteria just described above, like in the previous slide. It can be used in most situations requiring the stabilization of one or more teeth if sufficient sound teeth remain for anchoring. So immediately you can place the brackets and you can place the this zero uh, like if you have a standard edge wise 
brackets which do not have any inbuilt uh, rotation and angulation and talking you can do that and you can place a passive wire for stabilization follow-up procedures replanted teeth should be monitored clinically and radiographically at two weeks when the splint is removed four weeks three months six months and then one year and after that on yearly basis at least for five years clinical and radiographic examination will provide information to determine the outcome evaluation may include these findings for open apex teeth there is always a favorable outcome favorable outcome in the closed apex like if the tooth had had closed apex at the time of evolution and you have replanted it asymptomatic functional normal mobility no sensitivity to percussion and normal percussion sound normal percussion sound is telling that it is not ankylosed no radiolucencies and no radiographic evidence of root resorption the lamina dura appears normal means there is no inflammatory resorption there is no resorb this uh, replacement resorption or ankylosis in case of open apex asymptomatic fun like the apex was open when you replanted it asymptomatic functional normal mobility no sensitivity to percussion and normal percussion sound radiographic evidence of continued root formation and tooth eruption pulp canal obliteration is expected and can be recognized radiographically sometime during the first year after the trauma it is considered to be mechanism by which the pulp heals and after replantation of evolved immature permanent teeth means there is secondary dentine deposition as a reaction to the trauma unfavorable outcomes in case of closed apex patient may or may not have symptoms presence of swelling or sinus tract may be there the tooth may have excessive mobility or no mobility because of ankylosis with the high pitched metallic percussion sound when you will hear this sound it is diagnostic of the tooth ankylosis presence of radiolucencies radiographic evidence of infection related like inflammatory resorption ankylosis related like replacement resorption or maybe both are present when ankylosis occurs in growing patient infra position of the tooth is highly likely to create disturbances in alveolar and facial growth over the short medium and long term in case of open apex what would be the chances of unfavorable outcomes and what it is going to happen the patient may or may not have symptoms presence of swelling or sinus tract the tooth may have excessive mobility or no mobility like ankylosis with high pitched percussion sound in the case of ankylosis the tooth may gradually become infra position presence of radiolucencies radiographic evidence of infection related like inflammatory resorption or maybe ankylosis related the replacement re resorption or absence of continued root formation when ankylosis occurs in a growing patient infra position of the tooth is highly likely to create disturbances in alveolar as well as facial growth over the short medium or the long term long term follow up is required why a long term follow up is required to keep an eye on developing complications like maybe loss of the replanted tooth or development of the infra occlusion so over here i just provided you with a brief overview on this topic and hopefully all the questions in your exams or even if you are a practicing dentist if such a situation comes in front of you you would be able to handle the situation so see you soon with the uh, with next uh, lecture on it if you want we can go on a complete lecture on different types of trauma uh, or to teeth and we can discuss those as well in our next lecture so you can just let either uh, inform me or you can let uh, know the owners of this channel and you can even provide the information or whatever your queries and your questions and your feedback is always welcome and that helped me in 
uh, improving my lectures and that also help me in finding where I am lacking and what other information you people want to get. So thank you very much and see you soon with the next lecture. So for thanks a lot, sir. Done. Thanks a lot, sir, for the great lecture. Thank you and uh, everybody happy holidays and a very happy Christmas and uh, inshallah see you soon. Uh, maybe if we will have some uh, topic coming in our way, we will see uh, uh, during the holidays. Otherwise, definitely after the holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Khuda Hafiz.